Hi everyone, my name is Yemi and today I'll be talking about amplifying black women's voices by building inclusive tech spaces beyond tokenism. Now, here's a bit about myself. I am a final year software engineering student in Portsmouth University and I'm also a hairstylist. I've had my business for over three years and it's doing really well. If you would like to follow me on LinkedIn, you can quickly like, <laughs> you know, just saying. All right. First of all, I'd like to start with what is tokenism? Tokenism is the act of doing something, such as hiring a person belonging to a minority group, in order to prevent criticism or give up the appearance that everyone is being treated fairly. So in this situation, hiring a black woman in order to boast about your diversity metrics, for example, as opposed to hiring her for her talent or skill. What is inclusion? Inclusion is creating a space where everyone feels valued and welcomed, respective of, irrespective of their background. Now, some statistics for you. There are only 0.7% of black women in the UK tech industry, and to only 22% of women in general in the UK tech industry. So majority of the tech industry is filled by men, as we all know. 83% of tech director roles are filled by men, and 62% of women of color have experienced inappropriate remarks or comments. So if we look around the room, I'm the only black woman in here. <laughs> Just saying. And there are only, what, two other females in here? That just proves my point. So for more vis visualization, as you can see, 0.7 is quite low on the scale, which also talks about the underrepresentation of black women in the tech industry. Here are some statements that black women have made while having a conference, and this was gathered by the CIO.com organization. I work like there's no tomorrow, and I don't get promoted. They're not willing to invest in me. People put you in the front and center of their photographs on their website so they can boast about their diversity metrics, even though you might be the only person of color working in their organization. If you assert yourself or disagree with someone, it's very easy for you to be labeled as aggressive or being difficult, whereas other people might just be called passionate. If I sit in a room with 10 colleagues and I'm the only black woman or black person, I can assure you that they all assume that I'm the one taking the minutes, even though I might be more senior. There weren't many people, there weren't many people of my color in higher positions. And I'm not saying that you should hire a black person as a token gesture, but you don't see that many black people progressing. When you're a token hire, none of what you say or do is of value. You're never really put on any strategic projects or features. You're almost relegated to the absolute bottom of the to-do list. Got told we were both diversity hires and that there were people in the team who were not happy about us getting hired and promoted, and they hadn't. Let's have a reality check. These are statements made by real women, black women in the tech industry in the UK, and they face this on a day-to-day -day basis. Discrimination, bias, microaggressions, stereotypes, underrepresentation, limited access to mentorship and opportunity. Ooh, sorry. So, limited access to mentorship and opportunities, tokenism, where a, one black woman is expected to represent an entire community, misogyny, the list goes on. Now, what is microaggression? Microaggressions are subtle, usually unintentional, but hurtful comments or actions that communicate negative messages about a person's race, ethnicity, ge gender, sexual orientation, the list goes on. Microaggressions are a reality for 64% of women in the tech, in the UK tech industry. And microaggressions can just be as harmful, if not more, than overt forms of racism. This was said by, I apologize if I pronounce her name, um, their name inappropriately, Rushika, I think. Now, microaggression isn't always verbal. It can also be nonverbal, and this can be shown in tonation, facial expression, just your overall demeanor, et cetera. Perception is greater than intent. What does this mean? 
This means that how you intend for something to be perceived by another person isn't always how it's perceived. We need to understand that microaggression often stems from unconscious bias as opposed to malicious intent, and that we need to focus more on the impact it has on the other person as opposed to the intent. If we want to solve the issue of microaggression in the work industry, it would have to start with you as a person, so I advise that you be the change. Now, the University of Toronto have come up with this acronym that can help you as individuals address microaggression. C stands for consider. Consider how your words or actions might be harmful to the other person. A stands for account accountable, accountability. Take accountability for your action. It's not every time you have to get defensive. You need to understand where the person is coming from and just apologize. R is rethink. Rethink some of the stereotypes or some of the stereotypes that have been implanted into you or that you have been taught. It's 2024, the world is progressing, and so are we as human beings. E, empathize. Empathize with the person on the opposite, um, the receiving end of this microaggression. And S, show support. How can you show support? You could ask how you can help. You can also intervene if you do witness this happening to someone. Now, how can we address microaggression as an organization, if you have a business, you first start by creating a, a safe space where everyone feels safe enough to voice their concerns without feeling like, oh, I might lose my job, or you know, I'm gonna be get, get I'm gonna get treated unfairly in the workplace. Make a clear reporting channel where, you know, is specific towards this um, problem, which is microaggression and make it known that this is what this is for and is unbiased. Address toxic behaviors in the workplace. So you can do this by having talks or making, having trainings about unbiased, um, how to be unbiased and how to reduce microaggression within the workspace. And always encourage allyship and support within people, um, within your organization and between your, what's the word? Within your workers, thank you. How can we amplify black voices within an organization? You can partner with other organizational platforms that focus on diversity and inclusion, um, create platforms and opportunity for black women where they can also support themselves and, sh and share their ideas and skills. Um, mentorship programs. So a lot of girls like me were Im intimidated by the tech industry because we always hear that it's very male dominated. You can Create mentorship programs where you can show off that this is what women and black women are doing in the tech industry and you don't need to be afraid. Here are some black women in the tech industry that are doing wonders. They all have organizations that are nonprofit that you can partner with as an organization to promote diversity and inclusion within. We have Charlene Hunter, she is the CEO of Coding Black Females is a non-profit organization. She herself is also a software developer. We have Karen Emelu. She is the founder of Black Girls in Tech, which is also a non-profit organization. They're all platforms where you, they promote diversity and show support towards black girls. And we finally have Kat Kimberly Bryan. She is the founder of Black Girls Code. These are all some of the organizations that can be partnered with. They all are platforms and they are readily available on the internet. All you have to do is just sit down and do some more research in order to promote diversity within. Other organizations are Code First Girls, UK Black Tech Women, etc. If there's anything though you've taken from my talk today, let it be the acronym of CARES, which is Consider Accountable Rethink, Empathize, and Support. Thank you very much. Any questions?